everybody watching at home, if you don't have a three quarter inch size Pilates mat, invest in it. You'll, you'll be much happier. It is way different than doing it on a yoga mat. They're really thin and you want that thick mat for the spine support because we roll and we lay on the hips and stuff. So definitely worth the investment if you're doing this at home. All right, cool. So Marcia, go ahead and lay on your back and uh, your knees are going to be bent. Your feet are going to be down on the mat. Good. And then just put your arms down by your side. And I'm going to do some of this with you. So for, for watching at home, you can see. Now we're going to start by moving the pelvis. So you're going to tip the, the tailbone towards the mat. You're going to get a slight arch in the low back, a little more than neutral. And then you're going to rock back on the sacrum. I think the tailbone will point towards the ceiling. We're going to do this real gentle. So you can kind of feel any of the little tissue movements or subtleties happening through your body as you do those pelvic movements. So we just kind of tip it forward and back. Nice, now go ahead and bring it back to neutral. Walk your feet in about two to three inches closer together. So they'd be about three or four inches apart. And now we're going to, we're gonna start with the same thing. You're gonna tip the tailbone away from you. Get that slide arch in the low back here. And then as you rock the pelvis back, you're gonna roll up just to the base of your shoulder blades. Okay, once you get there, you're gonna roll down one vertebra at a time. So you feel this kind of lengthening happening through the spine. Roll across the sacrum, tip the tailbone back towards the floor, feeling a little more arch here. And then we go back through it. We rock the pelvis back, tailbone points towards the ceiling, and then roll up just to the base of your shoulder blades. And then coming down again, one vertebra, at a time. So after I'm done with this one, I'm going to watch so I can see you a little better. And once you have it, try to look up towards the ceiling again so your neck doesn't get all twisted. Go ahead, go ahead and do one more like that. All right, great job. Now coming back to neutral, walk the feet apart again, and this time just turn your feet out a little bit. So we have a little bit of external rotation through the hips. The toes are pointing out to a diagonal, about 45 degrees. Keeping your pelvis neutral, lift straight up into a bridge. So if you've been sitting a lot, working at home or working on the computer, your hips are probably a little tight. So you wanna keep the hips lifting. You might feel your glutes engage because that's what's really lifting you. And then the last thing we're gonna do is you're gonna lengthen through the kneecaps. Just imagine the thigh bones reaching out through your knees. Good, you got it. Now keep your pelvis neutral and just lower it straight back down to the mat. Okay, we're gonna do a few of those. So we're gonna do the same thing, lift. Feel that stretch through the front of the hips, feel the glutes engage, and then lengthen through the thighs, good. And then same tempo, we're gonna lower down nice and slow, making sure to keep your pelvis neutral on the way down, okay? So neutral pelvis for the whole thing, when we lift and when we lower. So I'm gonna watch you do a couple of them. Good, push a little bit higher, about an inch higher. There you go. Now, when you come down, this is really common, especially if you've been sitting a lot, especially when your hips are tight. Try not to tuck on the way down. So you wanna feel that your thighs are just, like you're creasing here at the top of the, the thighs to, to, to get the lower. Yep. Let's do two more. So lift up. Get nice and high, get a little stretch through here. Now when you lower, imagine that again, the top of the thighs are just creating like a crease and you wanna get good. Okay, let's do one more like that. Up. 
Good. And then lower back down. All right, awesome. Walk the feet just a little bit closer together again, about three or four inches apart. And this one's going to be to stretch your shoulder blades. You're going to take your arms straight up so your fingertips are pointed to the ceiling. And we're going to start with the right side. You're going to think about your shoulder blade. And you're going to wrap the shoulder blade to the outside of the body. And you're going to see the fingers go to the ceiling. Then just drop the shoulder blade back down. You're going to go to the left side. You're wrapping it around, kind of like a wing and then let it drop down. And we're gonna alternate sides. Stay focused on that shoulder blade. When you round it, you might feel some stretching. The arm's definitely gonna get longer. And then when it slaps down, it just goes back to neutral. Okay, so keep alternating sides. I'm gonna watch you. Try to keep the elbows as straight as you can and just feel that vibration when it slaps back down. Good. All right, perfect, great. So just lower your arms down by your hips on the mat, okay? And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the head and the upper part of your shoulder blades off the mat. So the first thing is bring the arms up about six inches off the floor, nod your chin towards your chest, when your head rolls up, you're going to look towards your belly button or towards your tailbone. Reach to the fingertips. Good. And then lower your head back down. Rest the arms back down. Okay, that's what we're going to do a few of those. So arms first. Nod your chin. And you reach and you lengthen through the arms. And back down. I'm feeling a lot of stretching through my shoulder blades and back. I guess that was tight today. You might often feel some of the abdominal muscles start to engage here, okay? And the sensation is like a flattening of the abdominals, not like a bulky bunching up, but a skin deep contraction that's more of a flattening feeling, right? Come on up and reach. And we'll do two more of these. This is called a head roll up. Awesome, okay, cool. Now keeping your arms down by your side, we're gonna lift the feet off the floor. So we're making a 90 degree angle of the knee. So I'm not open or closed, it's 90. And the same thing at the hip. So we're gonna make sure it's not open or closed, that it's right at 90 through the hips and knees. And they're gonna be about hip distance apart, about three or four inches. Take your arms up and bend your elbows. So we're gonna be, so this is called a dying cockroach. <laughs> So we're, we're going to move the opposite uh, knee and elbow are going to move away from each other. But you want to keep your back and pelvis neutral. And then you come back up. We're going to alternate sides. So kind of float it so you can feel how the muscles, mostly through your back and abs, are contracting to keep you balanced and to keep you neutral. And up. Good, we'll do one more of these. Cool, just give yourself a hug and just kind of rock. Let your back relax. Okay, hopefully you didn't get any added tension through the back. If you did, you probably need to work on strengthening that, which I'll bring some of those cues to attention during the class. Okay, so from here, we're just kind of rolling, letting the back relax, taking some deep breaths. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is the 100. And I actually got a prop <laughs> to use today because I'm gonna demonstrate it with you guys and it's hard to count and do it at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I can, but I was like, you know what? My counting might not be perfect. So I've got a little metronome on my phone. So this is just a free metronome on the phone and you can hear it on the microphone. Okay, so when we are actually doing the 100, I'm gonna play this and it's set up so it's five counts. So it goes beep, 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 beep. So there's a high note. So on the high note, that's the one. And we're gonna do a five second inhale and a five second exhale. So that's 10 seconds for each breath, right? And we do 10 breaths for 100. 
The other thing the hundred is about is creating, uh, matching the external rhythm. So you're pumping the arms with the sound that you're hearing. Okay. So I'm going to talk through getting set up and then I'll play this for the, for the 10 count of breaths. So the setup is going to be this. You're going to bring the knees in towards your chest and I want you to create instead of a neutral spine, round the back a little bit into the floor. So you're going to feel the navel pulling in. It's kind of flattening of the abs and that should help kind of round more your back. You're going to take the arms straight up. You're going to nod your chin and we're going to bring the arms down to six inches from the floor. Now take the legs straight up to the ceiling, eyes on your, eyes on your belly button. And if you can lower the legs a little bit towards the floor, but don't lose that rounding into the mat of the low back. So I don't want you to pop up into neutral. Okay. And you're going to start pumping the arms. Okay. Now I'm going to play the, <laughs> I'm going to play the little prop that I brought. I'm going to put that right by the microphone. Okay. So from here, we're matching the beat. And it's going to be in, in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, thirty, two, three, four, five. Before I got off on the tempo, fifty, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, sixty, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, look at your navel. Eighty-two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, ninety-two, three, four, five, exhale. Last one. And bring your knees in and relax, rock side to side. So you should be feeling that considerable amount, <laughs> considerable amount of effort through the abdominal area, right? So great job on that. Okay, cool. So come on up to a seated position. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit with your legs stretched out in front of you. Okay, good. Make sure you have some room on the mat behind you. We're gonna point the toes. And getting right up tall on the sitting bones, take your arms in front of you. Okay. We're going to start by pulling the navel back. So we're tilting the pelvis back behind us and we're going to roll back from the pelvis through the sacrum all the way down. We're going to stop with the arms up. Okay. Make sure that you're able to pull your ribs down. Okay. We don't want a neutral back. We want ribs down, back rounding to the floor, pelvis tilting back. Nod your chin. We're going to roll all the way up over the legs. Good. And flex your feet. Yeah, so flex the feet, reach forward through the fingertips. Good, now point the toes, start to roll back, but we're gonna start with the pelvis. Roll all the way along the spine. Take the arms just a little bit past vertical this time. Good, and we're gonna go through it again. Pull the ribs down, nod the chin, roll all the way up, and flex the feet, reach forward. Great, point the toes. Again, pelvis first. Roll across the sacrum through the spine and the arms go just a little bit further back this time. Yeah, pull the ribs down, coming back up and over and stretch, feel that stretch. I feel it through my calves. <laughs> Weird things are tight today. The Pilates always stretches what is tight and strengthens what is weak. So I've got this big stretch through my calves, but you might likely feel it through the hamstrings through the back of the thigh or maybe even between the shoulder blades because all that stretching. Reach and down. Each time taking the arms a little bit further back, we're gonna do two more of these. Good, nice Marsha. And see if you can bring the arms all the way to the floor but without letting your ribs pop up. So if they're popping up, lift them a little more so they don't. Really pull the ribs down and up and over. That's <laughs> the last roll up. All right, great. Sitting up nice and tall. You might scooch a little bit forward. We're gonna roll back down to the floor. 
And we're gonna do, this is a, a nice hip opening exercise, but also we're strengthening our back a lot. So we're gonna pull the arms down, take the right leg up, flex your, flex your foot on the left side. So pull the toes towards you on your left foot. But the right foot is gonna point and you lift the leg up. Cool, now you wanna press back down through the back of the left thigh, through both arms. And we're gonna draw a circle, go across the midline of your body, out to the side, hold and then repeat. We go across, out to the side, hold, right? And again, circle, out to the side and hold. And then after we get to the top, that spot we're holding, we're gonna switch directions on that same leg. So now we take the leg out to the side, then across and then hold. Are your arms still working? <laughs> Is the back of your left leg still reaching back into the floor? Good, let's do one more. And when we get up to that spot where we're holding, right, it's usually about vertical, you're gonna flex the foot. So you're gonna pull the toes towards you and then we take the foot and leg down. Cool. All right, other side. So now you can start by pointing the toes on the left foot and start to pick it up. And you wanna feel where you're feeling some stretch, but not so much that you have to tilt your pelvis back. So we wanna to try to keep it as neutral as we can on this one and go across the body and start the circles. Straighten your knee a little bit more. Good, now change direction of the circles. Okay, keep going. You guys are gonna do two more. Good, one more, Marsha. Perfect, now pull the toes towards you, reach through your heel and slowly bring your leg down. All right, great job on those, cool. All right, so we're now we're gonna move into some of the side leg exercises. So just roll over onto your side and you're gonna come up right on your forearm. Okay, so last week we worked quite a bit on the kicking one. Today we're gonna to start with a different one, which is called leg pull down. So you're gonna have the legs, the feet are flexed a little bit in front of your body. Take the top leg, point the toe, externally rotate from your hip, and you're gonna lift the leg up, yeah? Flex your foot, internally rotate the thigh at the hip and lower, All right? So this can create, a, this can be great for creating space through those hips. A lot of times the low back tension can be relieved by creating more space through the hips. This is nice because I can look at you and you can look back at the camera. We don't have to be turned and rotated. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do this backwards basically. So the foot is flexed, we internally rotate the hip and lift it. From there, you point the toe, externally rotate from the hip and lower it. All, right. All the while, Marsh is doing awesome with this. You wanna keep your pelvis really stable so the hips are stacked. If we're wobbling through here, it's, it's not great. So if you are watching this and wobbling, try to reduce the range of motion in other words, don't lift quite as high and see if that helps you get more stable through here. You could also lay so that you're, uh, you have a wall behind you. If you have a blank wall in the house, that's a great way to, you can put your hips up against that and that will help stabilize them. Okay, one more. All right, great, cool. Now, the next one we're actually gonna lay down on the arm you want to have your palm facing up and you can put your other hand just in front of your chest on the floor. We're going to flex the feet. Now the top leg is going to lift up about three or four inches. You're going to internally rotate it. This is called a hot potato. 
So we actually bounce the big toe in front and then hop it over and bounce behind the bottom leg. <laughs> Two more of these, last time, and then bring your legs together. Cool, I love that one because like the vibration always feels really good, it's fun. So now flex your feet, lift both legs up. This is called walking. So the top leg comes forward like a scissor. Try to keep your knees straight and you're gonna reach through the heels and then we walk the other way. So again, that hip stability, pelvic stability, real important. If you're having a hard time, this one is challenging, make your steps narrower. So maybe you're only doing a few inch step, but that's good if you're keeping the hip stable. Good. Good. And then bring the legs together and then lower it all the way down to the floor. All right, one more on this side. So this next one, we're going to take the top leg and you're going to lift it, keep the foot flexed and lower it. This one is called scissors. Pull the pinky side of your foot up more, Marsha, on your flex. So flex from here a little more. Yeah, like that. Okay, now lift the leg up halfway, hold it there, and then the bottom leg comes up to meet it. Okay, one more of those. Great job, lower your legs down, and we're gonna change to the other side. So hopefully you're feeling a little bit of heat. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. All right. So the first one we did exactly, you're setting up exactly correct. Take, take the foot, point it, externally rotate from the hip and lift. Flex the foot, internally rotate and lower. And Marsha's doing a great job of pressing her forearm into the mat, and you wanna do that. You don't wanna be slouching. So you wanna really press that forearm down. Okay, now after this one, we're gonna do it backwards. It sounds scarier than it is. <laughs> so you're gonna flex the foot, internally rotate to lift, point the toe, turn out to lower. Great way to open up the hips and strengthen them. These are just amazing. I think when you're doing a lot of stuff around the house, we don't do enough lateral movement. We don't move things out to the side. It's always forward and backwards. So this can be a great way to build up that strength. And you notice it. <laughs> when you stay consistent with it, you can feel the, the gains on that. It becomes a lot easier to do and you look better and feel better. All right, great. Now flex your feet, lower down, lay down on the arm. Remember, palm is gonna face the ceiling. And we're gonna flex the feet. It's hot potato. <laughs> so the top leg lifts up, internally rotate it and you just jump the foot and then you tap with the big toe. And bring your legs together. Awesome, so walking, flex the feet, lift both up, keep the knees straight. Right. And this side may feel different than your other side. Maybe you're super stable, this side's a little more wobbly. So remember, take smaller steps if it's wobbly. Keep your pelvis stacked. Good, one more. And then bring the legs together whew, and lower down. Really, I'm <laughs> really feeling this right here. So this is the right spot to feel it. So I'm glad that I'm feeling it in the right spot. And that's, that's what we're getting strong. Now we're gonna do scissors. So for scissors, the top leg will lift and lower. And we're doing five top scissors and then five bottom scissors.
Awesome, Marsha. Now take your leg up halfway, hold it there, and then lift and lower the bottom leg. Good, last one, and bring both legs down. Whew, <laughs> feel that. Now go ahead and roll over onto your stomach, and I'm gonna just move my head because my microphone is over here. So we're gonna do um, a plank uh, on your forearms, and we're gonna hold it for 30 seconds. So I recommend interlacing the fingers. So your fingers gonna be interlaced, and your fingers are gonna be centered with your nose and chin. So when you have that there, you're gonna reach the forearms into the mat, the toes tuck under, and you're gonna lift your hips coming up into a nice plank, okay? I'm gonna come out of this so I can check your form. Why don't you come down as well? And then I'm gonna tell you when to go into it. I'll give you any, any cues to help you with your form, and you're gonna hold this next one for 30 seconds. All right, so go ahead and tuck the toes under. Your arms are in a great spot. Bring your feet a little bit closer together, about two inches closer. It's about hip distance apart. Feet together is the most challenging position. If, if you have challenges with planks, then I would have you go wider, but I think you'll be fine with neutral. And go ahead and tighten the abs. Again, it's that skin deep contraction. Lift the hips up into the plank. Good, I'm gonna start counting. And the key is to stay neutral. Imagine that you're lengthening the neck, try like, like you're trying to reach your head to the opposite wall. Yeah, yeah, like that. Keep the abs nice and tight. And I can have a clock up here, I can see. Good, keep breathing nice and deep. And you wanna keep reaching like through the elbows and forearms down to the mat, that should help a lot. And if you have to come out of it, do it, just go right back into it. And we're almost at 30 right there. Okay, we're at 30 right there. All right, great job, lower down. <laughs> All right, great. All right, so let's do, um, let's come into, um, are you okay coming onto your hands and knees? We're gonna go onto your hands and knees and you're gonna point your fingertips towards the, towards the middle. So you wanna make sure that your knees are under your hips, wrists are under the shoulders, okay? So once you're there, for this exercise, we're gonna arch the back. And what that means is you're gonna move the tailbone towards the ceiling and lift your chest forward, eyes forward. So this creates a little back arch or extension and then bend your elbows, lower your chest to the mat, nod your chin, drop the tailbone, and we round up into this nice, awesome cat stretch. Woo! Back through the arch, right? So tailbone up, chest forward, lower the chest, and this amazing kind of nice round cat stretch, yeah? Let's do two more. I'm going to round into that. And I'm going to watch you guys for the last one. Go ahead. All right, awesome. That looks like it feels good. I love doing that one. It's one of my favorite. It just stretches the right spots. Okay, good. So, Marcia, come on down back onto your stomach. And we're going to go back into this, this forearm position with the fingers interlaced. But this time we're not gonna come up into a plank. This is called a single leg kick. So your toes are gonna to point, your chest is reaching forward. So you're lifting with the chest. So you're using some of the back muscles, opening up the shoulders. And we're gonna do two kicks of the right leg first. So we just bend the knee and it's kick, kick. And then we go to the left leg, kick, kick. So the key is keeping your chest lifted and this is a great stretch for the quads, the front of the thighs and the hips. This will also stretch out your shoulders. It's a great posture <laughs> kind of corrective exercise. It gets our shoulders back, strengthens that upper back, right? And again, stretches out the hips. So keep alternating sides. Now we're gonna flex the foot and do the kick. So you bring the heel towards your butt. Flex and kick, kick. Okay, 
Now on the next one, we're gonna point with the first kick and flex with the second kick, right? Point and then flex, both kind of good kicks, really kind of bringing that foot towards your, uh, towards your butt. Kick, kick, and last time, kick, kick. Whew, I'm actually sweating after that one. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So now lower down and you're gonna turn over to one cheek. So I recommend obviously starting so you're looking at the camera, right? So from here, you're gonna bring your legs together. Your arms are gonna come by your side with the palms facing up. Okay, make sure that you don't have any pain. So if you need to make a modification, do that. So we're gonna kick the, <laughs> we're gonna kick our butt again, but both legs are gonna like stick together. So it's like one giant leg. <laughs> we're gonna kick three times this time. Toes stay pointed, and then when the feet go down, you arch, so you lift your chest, oh, and then turn to the opposite cheek. Okay, so I'm gonna watch you guys, and you can hear how my voice changed. <laughs> this is effortful, uh, but it feels really good. So again, we're stretching the front of the shoulders, right? We're stretching the hips, and really working that back. Beautiful. And relax, well done, nice, it was perfect, Marsha. All right, so come on back into like a, a rest pose or a child's pose. This will stretch your back out. Usually take the knees wide as long as that feels comfortable for you. I know some people can't bend their knees all the way, that's okay, there's no specific position you have to do this in, but you're just gonna stretch your back out. So just get into either a child's pose or maybe you wanna do another cat stretch, whatever feels good to you. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna come out of that and we're gonna do another side exercise. So we're gonna, we're gonna come into this forearm position. This is a side plank, but we're gonna do it on our forearm, kind of like how we did the regular plank. So for the side plank, forearms down, your legs are stacked in front of your hips a little bit. Make sure Marsha is set up perfectly. I don't want anybody doing this at home with their arm out from under them. You wanna have that elbow right under your shoulder. Yeah, Marsha's nailed it. it. Looks perfect form, just like mine. So we're gonna take the free hand. You put it on the floor in front of your in front of your navel, and it just brushes against the floor. You lift it up overhead, press that forearm down to lift your hips. As you lower the hips, the arm just circles back around. Yeah, good. Again, I'll do one with you. Lift the hips and reach. Woo, and back down. Okay, and we're gonna do two more on this side. I'm gonna watch. So go ahead and circle, lift. Beautiful. And down. Awesome, coming down, cool. All right, great job. Now I recommend doing like another little back stretch or child's pose in between changing sides. So you could do Again, like an all four stretch, like that. Move your hips back and forth. Maybe you wanna do a cat stretch or a good child's pose like that. Just kind of stretch out your shoulders specifically now, the lats right here, and your back, your neck stretch, okay? All right, let's do those on the other side. I'm gonna set up to do the first couple with you guys. So again, forearm down feet flexed in front of you. If you have problems with stability, you could bring one, the other foot in front of that one on the floor. This one helps a ton with, if you feel like you're wobbling, and hand in front of the, the belly button, reach it overhead, push the forearm down, lift, feel the strength and power in this move. It's a very powerful move. And up, down, Right. If you weren't sweating before, you're sweating now. And two more. This is the other foot position that's a little more advanced because you have less foot on the floor. You can put, bring the feet together and up and down. 
Awesome. Okay, now scoot your body forward, go towards one edge of your mat, and we're going to do a little bit of rolling. So we're going to start with the hands just kind of hooked around the back of your thighs, just below the knees, and you're going to point the toes. We're going to roll, stretch the legs, and roll up. Okay. Just kind of think about this like a massage on your spine. Rolling is always really telling, I find sometimes you think you're rolling straight back and then you kind of roll to the side. <laughs> I do sometimes, you guys, I have scoliosis, so I don't know which way it's gonna turn sometimes and I'll just kind of like, oh, okay, that's happening. Sort of roll off to the side, trying to do it centered. And let's do a couple more of these. Hopefully this feels good. Awesome. And coming up. All right, cool. Now, did that feel good? Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's do, um, this one's called open leg rocker. So it's another rolling exercise, but it adds some leg stretch to it. So from, for open leg rocker, you're gonna sit on the sitting bones. You're gonna hold onto the lower leg just above the ankle. Your toes are pointed. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just straighten the right leg just to your comfort level. Okay, bring it back down and then we go to the left leg. And back down. So it's just again, so it feels like a good stretch for you. Some of you may be straightening all the way and some of you may need to keep it slightly bent. Whew. All right, now we're gonna open both legs. You keep them straightened to your stretch level and we roll. So if once we get that stretch, we roll. We roll back up and try not to lose your balance. Right, we're coming up, but we're staying towards the back side of the sitting bones. If we go too far past the sitting bones, that's when you'll lose your balance. Whoa, like that. <laughs> and then you wind up coming forward. Yeah. Oh, let's do one more of these while I demonstrate some of the things not to do. And then right here, back side of sitting bones, a nice stretch, and bend the knees, <laughs> come back down. All right, great. I watched a bunch of yours. So it looked really good. It's another fun one. And it's, it really stretches your hamstrings, a lot of the, the thigh muscles on the back where they attach to your pelvis. So we talked about your hips. This can be, it's another kind of great way to get your hips to open up. All right, so let's come into this position here. It's like a Z sit, yeah? All right, good. So whichever leg is in front of you, we're gonna stretch over that one. So you're gonna take your hands on either side of your knee, get nice and tall, and then you just sort of shift your body weight, kind of like you're crawling over that knee, and then just go down into the stretch of your comfort level. You may go on your forearms, Maybe your head is touching the floor if you're really flexible, or maybe you're just coming over a few inches. This is gonna stretch your hips, your lower back, the mid part of your back, the lats. And we're just gonna take a few deep breaths into this position. And then we're gonna crawl back up. So you just kind of shift your weight from one hand to the other. Yep, good. Now just switch your leg position. And then we're gonna do that on this side, right? So just kind of crawl down. And down to the forearms or wherever feels comfortable. Each side might be different, that's okay. One side might be tighter than the other. Okay, and then we're gonna sort of crawl back up and back out of that. So that's kind of one of my favorite go-to stretches. Like if I'm having a stressful day or maybe I'm doing a bunch of exercises throughout the day and I feel tight, sometimes I'll just get on the floor and do, do a couple of these. I like how it kind of opens up my hips a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna have you do another thing in this position. So you can take the hands behind you. It's probably not gonna be on your mat, depending on your height. And you're gonna kind of go through the legs on one side 
and then just kind of, it's like a windshield wiper. Yeah, you sort of switch sides. That's another just great way to open up the hips. Okay, cool. Let's do one more of these. And then we're gonna sit crossing the legs and we're gonna do some side bends from Pilates. So we're gonna sit like this. Doesn't that feel, that's just, I love how that just kind of opens up all of the muscles all around the hips, yeah? So from here, get nice and tall. And then take the arms just slightly in front of your shoulders. Take your right hand, lower it towards the floor, slide out towards the elbow, but you wanna keep your whole pelvis on the floor. So we're trying not to lift that left sitting bone. Yeah, come up through the center and then go to the other side, right? Left side down, reach out towards the elbow, keep that right sitting bone down and up through the center. And one more on each side. And you can really feel how you can focus on your breathing in this position, right? We can do some deeper, perhaps fuller breaths when we're side bending. Awesome. Come up through the center and then float the arms down. Okay. Now it wouldn't be a Pilates class if we didn't practice the teaser. <laughs> so we're going to do our teaser. So go ahead and lay down on your back. And we're going to start... We're gonna start with the knees bent, like uh, about a tabletop. You can have them a little closer to your chest if you want. And you're gonna bring your legs together and point the toes. So the first teaser we're gonna practice, it's kind of a warm up teaser to the full teaser. You're gonna have the arms up to the ceiling, knees in this position, toes pointed. Nod your chin, you're gonna rock up just to the back side of the pelvis, straighten the knees, reach for the toes, yeah? and then roll down back to knees bent, arms up to the ceiling. Okay, let's do that one again. So nod the chin, rock up, straighten the knees, reach for the toes. Good, good, good. And roll back down. Okay, now we're gonna go to the full teaser. So straighten the legs out on the floor and point the toes. If you don't want anything to do with the full teaser, you can stay with the one I just showed you. So the full version is we start basically flat. The key is getting your ribs down. So if your ribs are popping, it's gonna be real hard to roll and you actually might tweak your back a little. So get those ribs down, tilt the pelvis back. You may need to bring the arms a little bit higher to get the ribs down and come up and reach. Nice. And then roll back down. Okay, so let's do that version again. And roll back down. Good. And let's stick with that version two more times. Beautiful. Good. Awesome. And Marsha's teaser looks awesome. Great. Now bring your knees into your chest and rock side to side. So there are two ways that you can do the arms. And they're both appropriate. And those of you that have done reformer class have probably done that. So we go up. So we can go into this kind of both legs and arms in a diagonal. And the other way, you can come up and the arms can be here, more straight. And they're both, they're both, they're both appropriate for teaser. Yeah, exactly. All right, very nice. Good. <laughs> She's very perfect. Yeah, that's it. All right, one more. Do one more. All right, beautiful. Awesome teasers there. All right, so let's come on up to seated. Let's do, um, come into all fours. We're going to do some traditional cat stretches. We're going to start doing some more stretches here for the rest of the class. So cat stretches on your hands and knees, fingertips point forward. You're going to take a breath in. Exhale, we're going to round into the round back stretch. So you're pushing through the heels of the palms. Should feel awesome. And then inhale, arch the back. Tailbone up, chest forward. Whew. And then round. 
like that, yeah. And then arch. Okay, keep going, I'm gonna watch. She's gonna do two more of those. And then she's gonna arch on the last one and then she's gonna come back to neutral. All right, super. Now, go ahead and lay down on the floor. And this is going to be a shoulder stretch. You're gonna lay down with your knees bent. If you are uncomfortable with your head and shoulders, if you don't like having your head dropped, you could use a pillow or a rolled towel, okay? It's not required, but some people I know don't like the feeling of the head being down. Okay, so you could put a pillow here if you want to. Now your knees are gonna be bent, so they're about as high as your uh, belly button and your arms are gonna be stacked. We wanna have room, because we're gonna be moving the arm in a circle. Okay, and I can see Marsha has room. So go ahead and stack the arms. The arm that's on top, so Marsha, that's her right arm. She's gonna lengthen it a little bit longer than the bottom arm or left arm. So it's just gotten longer, You're rounding the shoulder blade forward. Now take the fingertips and start to draw a circle coming overhead. Your eyes are gonna follow the arm. So you notice how I turned my head and then I'm moving my eyes towards my hand throughout the whole circle, okay? We're gonna keep doing these. We're gonna do about four in this direction. So you're turning the head, kind of rolling on the mat or the pillow to look towards the hand, okay? Okay, and let's do one more in this direction. Okay. Now, when you come back and the arms meet again, we're going to stay on the same arm. We're going to change the direction of the circle. So you lengthen through the top arm. It's going to come over the knees and hips. Now, if you are really tight, you may not be touching the floor, and that's not uncommon. It's okay to have the arm elevated as high as you need to off the floor to get the circle stretch. Okay. And one more. Whew. All right, sweet. Now change directions. Uh, you don't have to stay looking at the camera unless you want to, Marsha. I'm gonna talk you through these. She's gonna roll over her back to the camera. It's just a little easier to roll to the other side and to switch everything out. It's a little more comfortable. Good, so take your left arm, stretch it out about two inches longer than the bottom arm and start the circle coming up and overhead. Okay, remember your eyes are gonna follow it, so your head may roll a little bit and it should be relaxing. And just tracing that circle around you. These are called feel good arm circles. <laughs> These came down from my lineage. Um, some of you know my lineage is in the Eve Gentry lineage of Pilates teaching. Joe Pilates taught Eve Gentry. He had eight original apprentices and she was one of them. And then she taught um, uh, Michelle Larson. Eve died before I got trained. She taught and worked with Michelle Larson very closely. So I did a lot of my trainings with Michelle Larson. And these are one of the ones that Eve used from Joe's work and kind of adapted. It was a little more of a stretch. So after this one, we'll change direction. Let's go ahead and change direction. Yeah, I talked through <laughs> the change of direction. So coming down over the hips and circling up and around. Beautiful. And it's just a really nice uh, chest shoulder opener. And Marsha's on three, hopefully everyone else is on three. And then we're gonna do one more. Last one of the feel good arm circles. Perfect, cool. So then when you come back uh, to the center, go ahead and just roll on your back with your knees bent comfortably. Okay, put one hand on the lower ribs, one hand on your uh, chest or around the breastbone area. 
Just take some nice deep breaths. So we're gonna take a couple more breaths, just kind of feeling where the air is going into your ribs, how your rib feel, how your ribs feel, how does your body feel right now? I'm sort of relaxing my body a little bit further back into the floor. And one more breath. Okay, great job today. Come up nice and slow.